All right, GI tract. Here are the, the organisms I'm going to talk about. Helicobacter, I almost left out of this discussion, but maybe you should know a little bit about it. Um, <coughs> for ages and ages in human medicine, uh, we've known that it's really hard to cure gastric ulcers in humans. We'd cure them and they'd relapse, okay? And why did they relapse? Well, the conventional dogma of the time, again for decades, was stress. These were type A personalities, high stress driven, high cortisols, this sort of thing. So that was always the explanation of why we cured, couldn't cure them. Uh, it was the immunosuppression from their personalities. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but they had known for a long time that when they biopsied these ulcers, they would find these bacteria in here, which were helicobacter, okay? The presumption was that these were just normal flora and didn't matter, all right? Uh, <coughs> there was an, a researcher, I think he was in Australia, that had the idea that these were related to the ulcer, okay? And he did research that revolutionized the treatment of <coughs> GI ulcers in humans, stomach ulcers in humans. He uh, proved that there was a link that helicobacter in humans predisposes to GI ulceration and GI neoplasia. He actually supposedly drank a culture of helicobacter to give himself an ulcer as part of the proof that it, that was the case. I don't recommend that research uh, approach, but supposedly he did it. But in human medicine, if you have a, an ongoing ulcer, they will either endoscopically biopsy you or there are alternative ways to prove you have helicobacter and then they will treat you for it. All right, typically an antibiotic and Pepto-Bismol with an acid suppressor. Now why Pepto-Bismol? Pepto-bismol is bismuth subsalicylate, and it turns out that bismuth has a very profound antibiotic effect on helicobacter. So they're using the bismuth uh, to treat the, uh, the helicobacter, okay? Now, why did I almost leave this out? This link in animals is very tenuous. Uh, they can culture helicobacter from normal stomachs of animals, small animals, without any pathology at all. And when they have treated these for helicobacter, uh, they come back a month or two later and they're infected again. So the thought is probably helicobacter is a normal flora in small animals. But you have some clinicians that when they, if they biopsy and they find organisms, a few clinicians will treat for helicobacter. Okay, but not routinely.
So, uh, we'll go ahead and continue talking about uh, bacterial gastroenteritis. And one of the causes of diarrhea in small animals is clostridial enteritis. And here you see a, a gram stain and we see the gram positive uh, rods associated with clostridia. And this is not a gram stain, it's just a stain, but uh, you may not be able to appreciate it, but there are uh, rods in here with um, clear centers, and those clear centers are the spores. And you see those two things, uh, not necessarily together, but uh, then clostridial enteritis needs to come uh, into your rule out list. Now this makes a point really about Okay. We're having a little feedback problem. do is when I remember now I want to and HGE is hemorrhagic gastroenteritis it's a disease of dogs uh, idiopathic uh, for the Uh, they have but if you t back so it looks like parvo but it's not um, <clears throat> now as I said we don't know uh, what causes it primarily it's supportive therapy fluid therapy is a big thing and by the way, one of your tip-offs on HGE is if you do a CVC uh, or PCV, they'll be very hemoconcentrated in the early phases of HGE. And by hemoconcentrated, I'm talking PCVs in the 60s sometimes. Uh, I've even seen low 70s. So you, you see an uh, uh, adult dog that looks and smells like Parvo, but he's hemoconcentrated, then he probably has HGE. Fluid therapy is a part of it. Now, if you gram stain these, you will see an overgrowth fluid. What we don't know is, is it significant? <laughs> is it a cause-effect relationship? Most people presume it's not. It's just an overgrowth in that environment that uh, favors clostridia. But regardless, we usually put them on one of these drugs because of uh, that overgrowth. So the true significance of the clostridial overgrowth in HGE is unknown, but largely we treat with antibiotics. Uh, even if it's not related, we, we're kind of concerned any enteritis where you've got blood leaking into the intestine, you probably have bacteremia occurring as well. So it's a, uh, a good choice from that point. Okay. So those are the... Uh,